Morris Shaw, my friend and fellow radio special producer, was lucky enough to get Victor Jory back for a second appearance at Tracks. This one was for the one-hour special, The Feast of Valentine. He starred as Zeus. This was a Valentine Day radio special for WHAS. And my friend Gary Burbank was the show's announcer, narrator, and two or three other people. From 1980, here's The Feast of Valentine. Welcome, friends and lovers, to The Feast of Valentine, starring Victor Jory. A story both ancient and contemporary, false and true, real and ideal, in short, a story of love. We begin at Olympus. Oh, not the mist-shrouded mountaintop from which the gods made life so entertaining for the ancient Greeks. Those titanic personalities are still with us, of course. But their new home is somewhat removed from the old attic splendor. It's less immediate, more state of mind. As our story opens, we find the mighty Zeus engaged in spirited play with his thunderbolts. It is for him a typically direct attempt at relevance. Uh -huh. How do you like that, mortals? <laughs> Can you doubt who it is that calls? Am I not Zeus, master of heaven, spanner of time, lord of the flies? I stand across time and space, one foot in ancient Attica, one foot on the neck of the new world. <laughs> and there's a lot more where that came from. And let them ignore that if they can. Echo! Echo! Yes, my lord Zeus? <gasps> oh, look, you've made it snow. Oh, it's lovely. Echo, little Echo. Yes, I've made it snow. All over New York City. Hmm? We'll see what they think of me now. Uh, uh, tell me, Echo, your young ears are better than mine. Listen, what are they saying? Oh, well, let me see. It, it's hard to tell. It's, it's all quite muted. Uh, let's see. Um, traffic impossible. Ten inches. Subway packed. Is, Sidewalks? Is that all? Well, it, it seems so. Oh, wait, there's a cab driver. Let's see. Oh, uh, oh, 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 Zeus, are my ears red? Not Nothing of, of me? Well, I, I don't think. Oh, wait, yes, there's something on their radio. Ah, radio. Now we're getting somewhere. Quiet. Oh, excuse me, Lord. Never, never mind, never mind. What is it? Zeus, three pieces. Ninety-nine, ninety-five. Three pieces? Three pieces? Suits? They're talking about suits? Oh, sorry, but, but there's a lot of static. Oh, these modern mortals, I give them a foot of frozen persuasion and they still go on with their petty mercantile lives. They're so, so pedestrian. Well, today, certainly. I'll show them. Lord Zeus, please. Ah, Aphrodite. Love. I will answer to either name, but I doubt I could hear anyone call over the roar of your incessant thundering. Young woman, I suggest that you recall to whom it is you speak and lower your voice. Now that it's a little quiet around here, that's possible. Forgive me, Lord Zeus, but is it too much to ask, considering our somewhat restricted circumstances, that we have a little peace? Well, since I'm through for the time being, I believe I can grant your request. Thank you, Zeus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Echo, I think our forward young goddess of love could use a thunderbolt right She's in her... She's troubled of late, Lord. Troubled? I think she feels, well, ignored. Oh, yes, that uh, being ignored is a problem for any being. For a goddess, it's nothing less than a slow death. Believe it or not, there are times when even I have doubts about my uh, mm, mm, uh, potency. Really? Yeah, it's true. We miss the old festivals, the heavens filling with incense, the sacrifices of snow-white heifers. It's easy to think of those times among the ancients as better days. We were closer to the mortals then. It was possible to have a more personal relationship. 
I, uh, I myself was known to fancy a little mortal <coughs> companionship at times. <laughs> of course, um, Hera would always make life very difficult for me afterwards, but uh, it always seemed to be worth it. Yes, Europa. Mm. Later, <laughs> I taking the form of a bull or a swan to approach them in the mm, most secret places. Oh. That was nice. Mm. What, what aspect could I assume to approach a woman now? A sports car? A pair of roller skates? Ah, uh, those were good days. Time has changed all that. Yeah, time changes nothing, Echo. What can the gods give mortals after all these long years? Understanding. The adventures of the gods are images of the souls of mortals. We are reflected in them and they in us. And if those images are obscured or lost... Then it is time for the gods to act again. Ah, but how? Even my bolts have no effect on them anymore. The thunder is only absorbed in the clamor of their everyday lives. Hmm. Ah, Echo. Yes, Lord? Go to Aphrodite. Comfort her. I will, but I don't know if, if I can comfort her. <laughs> tell her, um... Yes, tell her that love is not forgotten, that there is a day set aside for love. It's called Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day? What sort of observances are held? No, that's, that's not important. Uh, just tell her that. Uh, I will. Oh, and Echo, if you see Apollo, will you tell him I'd like to speak with him? Yes, Lord. Ah, uh, Zeus, you old fox. <laughs> Wheels within wheels, mm, yes, wheels within wheels within. Aphrodite, Aphrodite. Here, Echo, by the fountain. Are you all right, mistress? Yes, I think so. It's sweet of you to be so concerned. You know, of all the mortals on whom I worked my spells, you are my favorite. Victim? Victim? You can't feel that way, surely. I am condemned to eternal longing for the beautiful Narcissus, who loved only himself. Condemned or rewarded. While Narcissus now can never be yours, you have been given eternal hope, and that has raised you to the level of the gods. Hoping for love without having it is an eternity. But an eternity of beauty and maidenly innocence. You can't really hate me for that, can you, Echo? Oh, hate you, mistress. Oh, that would be impossible. That's good. I'm not sure I could stand any more rejection. You know, sitting here looking into the water, do you know what it reminds me of? Of the old days among the ancients. How did you know? Everything does anymore. Is it so obvious then? I suppose it is. Did I ever tell you about the temple they built for me at Kalitas? On the hill overlooking the capital? With its library. And its school of medicine? All those young physicians. And my statue looking out over the sea. And the sailors would salute you as the great ships left the harbor. Kalitas was a gem among cities. Pompeii was a village to it. I see, I have told you already. You may have mentioned it a few times. But your face becomes so radiant when you speak of it. I could hear the story a thousand times over. Ah, but I shouldn't speak of it so much. It only makes me that much sadder. Did you know they found my head in the basement of the British Museum? The head of Aphrodite gathering dust among the uncatalogued relics of forgotten ages. Well, at least you're not completely forgotten. I mean, someone knew whose head it was. And they took it upstairs. Yes, but the British Museum is hardly a temple. What am I to the mass of mankind but an unpronounceable proper noun? The name of one of those places businessmen go to when they're supposed to be having lunch. Massage parlors? Yes, that's it. How did you know? I listen a lot. Anyway, it's hardly what I'd call an honor. Oh, Echo, is there any future for a race that does not honor love? But they do. How's that? They do honor love. Zeus told me. They have a day set aside. A festival of Aphrodite? Where? 
when? Why haven't I heard? Well, it's not the festival of Aphrodite. They call it something else. What else could they call it? Now, what was it Zeus said? Of all times not to pay attention. <gasps> Valentine's Day, that's it. That's what they called it. Valentine's Day? Are you sure? Positive. It's Valentine's Day. Who is Valentine? I don't know. You don't suppose it's some new god? One we don't know about? <gasps> is that possible? Well, then who is he? And how did he get my day? Who would know? Apollo! Apollo. Whom should we ask but the god of all knowledge? Where is he? Echo, come with me. Whoa, boy. Whoa, now. Apollo? Stay back. You'll frighten them. Apollo. Apollo. Oh, now you've done it. They'll be off with Pegasus again, and Zeus knows where he'll lead them. Look at them. Grown fat on Elysian fodder. Apollo, what are you doing out here? Oh, I thought I'd hitch them up to the old chariot and take a few spins across the sky. Silly beasts. Never were properly broken. Well... Now, what kind of greeting is that? Oh, what kind of greeting did you expect? Interrupting a man in his work, scaring his horses. Work? You haven't done anything around here in centuries. Oh, you know you've been nothing but trouble for me ever since they popped you out of that oyster. Oyster? Sea foam. I was born of the sea foam from my father Poseidon. The only problem with you was you couldn't stand the competition. The epitome of manly grace and beauty. Ha! You've walked around for 3,000 years shooting profiles. Competition? Why, you couldn't compete with a Theban sheepdog for a mud fence award. Goddess of love. <laughs> Sucking up libations from lovesick old maids. Phoebus Apollo, god of light. It didn't take the mortals long to find out you weren't worth the candle. They built the Colossus of Rhodes to honor me in the aspect of Phoebus. It stood across the harbor, all burnished metal glowing in the sun. <laughs> I can't blame them for thinking you a bit dowdy in comparison. At least it took a tidal wave to topple my temple at Kalitus. They chopped you down and sold you for scrap. Ahem! Oh, hello, Echo. It's good to see you. Lord Apollo. Forgive my rudeness, Echo. I was distracted. Is there something I can do for you? I... I have a question to ask you. Could you tell me who Valentine is? Valentine? Valentine. I should know that. You should know everything. Well, I almost had it there for a second. Now, let's see. U, V, V, A, V, A, L. Ah, Valentine. A greeting card of a sentimental or satirical nature sent usually to one of the opposite sex on St. Valentine's Day. St. Valentine? But who is he? Valentine. Saint. Roman Christian martyr of the third century. Roman. That figures. Now, why would they honor love on St. Valentine's Day? St. Valentine's Day. Uh, that would be under S. Very good. Do you want to learn about this or not? I'm just a disinterested spectator. Go on, please. St. Valentine's Day. February 14, on which Valentines are traditionally exchanged. Oh, he's going around in circles. That's it. I've had enough. Zeus knows I've tried, but there's just no getting along with some people. Echo, I'm sorry, but I've really got to go. Apollo, Lord Zeus would like to see you. Thank you, Echo. Goodbye. If you'll permit my saying so, mistress, you weren't very helpful. Well, we weren't getting much out of him. I should have known better than to ask him in the first place. Echo, how would you like to join me on an investigation? Investigation? Good. Come with me. We're going to find out about this Valentine's Day. Mm, yeah. Now, now, let's, let's see. Where, where shall I watch today? Mm, mm, the south of France. Yes, that, that, that should be nice. Ah, <clears throat> very clear today. Mm, look at that. <sighs> yes, those French women really understand beach wear. Oh, yes. Lord Zeus, Lord Zeus, you uh, wish to see me? <clears throat> Apollo, yeah, yes, my boy, come sit down. 
You look somewhat heated. I've just come from a conversation with Aphrodite. No, I hear you. Uh, uh, sit down. Uh, grape? No, thank you. The two of you mm, don't get along very well, do you? No, not very. And yet I seem to remember a time when you were uh, quite close. Yes, I, I suppose you could say we were close mm. once. Yeah. But times change. So I have heard. Is that what you wanted to see me no, about? No, 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 not exactly. Um, <clears throat> tell me, uh, Apollo, how, how do you spend your days? Spend my uh, days? What, what do you do? You, you, you certainly don't pull the sun across the sky anymore. Well, well, no. Well, I used to, of course, but not anymore. An Italian fellow, a Galileo, suggested that it made more sense for the Earth to travel around the sun, and since that seemed to work pretty well, there didn't seem much point in my doing it. I mean, getting up before dawn and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. Mm. And, and, and then there are your duties as the god of knowledge. Uh, it's come to my attention that there are certain gaps in that encyclopedic brain of yours. Gaps? Blank spaces. Well, uh, of course, you must realize mm -hmm. that, that being God of knowledge is a much bigger job than it used to be. I, am. I, I mean, we're not dealing with a few pastoral odes in the occasional epic poem oh, here. No, no, no. <laughs> Ever since Galileo, the, the mortals have been figuring a lot of things out on their own. <clears throat> oh, they have so many books now. Uh, but but that's not to say I haven't been keeping up. Uh, I've still got what it takes up here. Really, really. Well, what can you tell me about the quantum theory? Uh, nothing. Finnegan's Wake, uh, the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, Valentine's uh -huh. Day. Uh, hmm? Valentine's Day. Oh. Uh, Saint Valentine's Day, to be precise. February 14, on which Valentines are traditionally exchanged. Not all that enlightening, my boy. Well, well I'm sorry. I do the best I can. What's the sudden obsession with Valentine's Day, anyhow? First Echo and Aphrodite, and now you? Oh, they've expressed an interest. Yes. Well, then, that's a good place for you to start. Start what? Your refresher course on the ways of mortals. I'm sending you down among mankind to learn their modern ways so we can relate to them a little more directly. Uh, your first assignment is to find out what you can about Valentine's Day. Mm. Ready? Right now, but... Oh! Have a good time, Apollo. The Feast of Valentine will continue right after this. And now, we return to the Feast of Valentine. As we've seen, all is not idyllic for our friends from Olympus. Aphrodite is depressed because no one seems to remember the goddess of love in our contemporary world. And she's gone off to find out how this upstart Valentine has got hold on the day mankind honors love. Apollo is certainly no longer his old knowledgeable self, and has taken to using what's left of his wit in feisty little arguments with Aphrodite. Even the mighty Zeus is somewhat taken with nostalgia for the good old days among the Greeks. But at least he seems to have a plan for remedying the situation and has sent Apollo more or less winging down to Earth to investigate the new festivities surrounding Valentine's Day. We rejoin our story at Apollo's landing spot. Oddly enough, in the depths of the New York subway system. Oh, jeez. The subway's packed. Who knows what's rubbing up against you? Hey, watch your hands, you lousy creep. Yeah, yeah, and so's Joe. Joe, mama. Just get me low. Lord, get me home to a nice hot meal with no broken toes. Oof. Hey! Uh, sorry. Uh, forgot to allow for the movement of the train when I landed. Where'd you come from, anyway? Oh, jeez. A toga. I remember this, Lord. Uh, excuse me, but could you tell me... I eat buying and I eat selling, so back off. Uh, well, neither am I. I'm looking for directions. Look, I'm going to be sorry for this, okay? Uh, directions to where? Well, the Valentine's Day celebration. The what? You know, the festivities in honor of Valentine. Who's Valentine? That's what I'm here to find out. I was right. I'm being sorry. Look, Mac, this is my stop here. Excuse me. Hey, hey, how did you get up here? Uh, about the celebration. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, there's a candy store down the block. Now, maybe they can tell you. I got to catch my ride here, okay? But let me give, give you a word of advice, okay? Get yourself some clothes on before you catch pneumonia. Uh, thank you. 
I will. Zeus? Yeah? It's been suggested I wear something a little more appropriate to the times. I didn't have a chance to pack, if you remember. All right. That's better. A little snug, but, but nice. Hey, what'd you put on my lip? A mustache. It's in style. It tickles. You'll get used to it. Thank you. Happy Valentine's. Millie, where you been? Sorry I took so long, Vina, but they didn't have any kosher dills left at Freddy's, and I said to myself, Vina just won't enjoy your sandwich without a kosher dill, so I went on to the deli. And the fact that Morton works at the deli didn't have anything to do with it, I suppose. Maybe a little. Maybe a little more than that. What do you see in him anyway? Oh, Vina, he's so attractive. He certainly thinks so. Did you let him know how you feel? Of course not. How? What about, hey, cutie, I think you're a hunk. Want to have dinner with me? <gasps> I couldn't do that. But I did slip a Valentine's card onto his tip tray. Signed? No. Aw, oh, Millie, you're hopeless. But this is a good pickle. Oh, a customer. Will you take care of him, Millie, while I finish the sandwich? Oh, gladly. Oh, he's really cute. Mm, yes, he is. What about Morton? Morton who? I can finish this later. I'll handle this one. I'll help. Pardon me. Why? What did you do? Millie. I'm looking for the Valentine's Day celebration. Celebration? Yes, and I was directed here. For the celebration? That's right. Well, we got any kind of candy you want, but the closest thing to a celebration is these bourbon balls here. Valentine candy? Yeah, you know, sweets for the sweet. I see. Oh, that's clever. I'll have to remember that. Maybe this would go a little faster if you gave us some specifics. You need something for your uh, wife, maybe. Oh, I have no wife. Is that what the candy's for? Uh, wives? <gasps> or sweethearts? Or both sometimes. So, Valentine's Day is marked by the giving of candy. Among other things. You from out of town or something? Why do you ask that? What Millie means is, you don't seem to know very much about all of this. Yeah, don't they have valentines where you come from? Well, not exactly. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm here. I I'm doing some research. Or well, maybe I can help you. I've been brushing up on the subject myself lately. Well, that's very kind of you, miss. Call me Vina. A lovely name. And you're a lovely woman. Oh, he knows it. Millie. What's your name? My name is a... You uh, forgot your name? Well, no. Uh, you can call me Homer. That's nice. Like Venus says, we'll be glad to help you, Homer. Isn't there something for you to do, Millie? No, it's pretty quiet around here. I wouldn't be surprised to see a customer come through that door any second now. <clears throat> Why, there's one. <gasps> oh, Venus, it's Morton. Imagine. Hadn't you better go see what he wants? I'll try to take care of Homer by myself. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Vina. So, Morton, hi. What can I do for you? Uh, I don't know. I was just uh, walking by the shop when I got this uh, sudden urge to come through the door. Hey, how'd you know my name? Oh, well, I come in the deli a lot. Uh, once in a while, and I, I hear the boss calling, Hey, Morton, another salami. And yeah. Hey, Morton, a potato salad needs more onion. <laughs> And you always go get the salami or you get the onion, so I figured you must be Morton, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Yeah, you know, you do Mr. Kinslow pretty good. Yeah, well, it's just a knack I have. Uh, yeah, I remember you. Gee, uh, you come in about every day, don't you? Well, I, I don't know if it's every day. Yeah, yeah, I seen you, I seen you. Well, I'm surprised you have time to notice me. You're so busy and all. Yeah, they uh, keep me hopping pretty good. You know, we got uh, good customers there and then, and during the slack periods, you know, I like to I like to keep the place pretty spiffy, especially all that chrome trim on the meat cases, you know. I, I like to keep it so I can see myself in it, you know, and you know, when you get up close to it, it makes your face look funny and your nose real big. <laughs> You don't like a fun house, you dig that? What fun? 
Yeah, yeah, of course, uh, the deli ain't what I got in mind for my life's work, you know. I'm just uh, working here till I can get some more money together, you know. I can see you're a man with ambition. What are your plans? Well, if I could save up enough dough, I'm thinking about heading out uh, to the West Coast. You know, I figure I'm a natural for the movies. You know? Oh, I think you're right. Yeah, what's Redford or Burt Reynolds got that I ain't? Looks? Hey, you know, I don't like to brag. But I've been told by some pretty classy dames, you know, like models and such, when they come in for a cup of coffee, that I'm one good-looking dude. Now, with a face like this, all I need is Hollywood and some good representation. Representation? Yeah, you know, personal representation, an agent, a good one. I think I'll go out west, get a good agent, and bingo, People Magazine. Sounds like you got it all worked out. Yeah, I don't like leaving nothing to chance. Of course, I'm a realist about the whole thing. I know it takes time. I'll probably have to start off small, TV show, something like that. But then it's only a matter of time before you see old Martin 20 feet high talking to you right out of that big movie screen. Boy, that'll be something to see. Gee, it's nice of you to share all this with me. Oh, I don't mind. You know, I'm a man with a dream, you know, and I can uh, still talk to people. Uh, that's going to be my trademark. I'm going to share myself. Say, you know what you could do for me? What? You could get me the biggest box of candy you got. Oh, that would be the deluxe assorted yeah. heart shaped with lace trim and a lifelike figure of Cupid on the lid. See, his little bow really shoots. Oops. Uh Sorry. No problem, mister. Oh. So, uh, this is to be for your sweetie. No, no, I, I ain't got no girl. You know you know who this is for, really? Who? Me. You? Yeah, this is my big TV night. I get the munchies, you know, and, uh, well, you, you know how to... Well, I'll see you around. Here, uh, you keep the change. Thanks. Yeah, you know, that's okay, because I'm pretty conscious about gratitudes, you know, working at the deli. You, you, you know what some cheapskate left me instead of a tip today? A Valentine card. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, so long. Yeah, so long. Then the gifts are not for a, a, a goddess, say, as with the ancients, but, uh, but are given to the beloved instead. That's right. <laughs> She'll love to hear that. Pardon? Uh, nothing. How did it go, Millie? How many bourbon bowls can I get for 78 cents? I see. I'm sorry. Hey, would you mind closing up alone tonight? Homer would like to buy flowers for someone, and I'm taking him to the florist. Well, I've got nothing else to do. Good luck. Thanks, but I don't really need luck, remember? So, this is a florist. Ah, uh, just smell the blooms and the rich, damp earth. <laughs> The pulse of spring in the frozen heart of winter. That's nicely put, but as I was saying, we have some of our more popular arrangement displayed in the window there. Yes, uh, those are very nice. Uh, don't you think so, Vina? Yes, nice, but... Oh, you're right. The occasion calls for something unique, something special. Well, we could put together an arrangement to order, you know, the old-fashioned flowers are very in nowadays. Callow lilies, daisies, baby's breath. Vina? Well, I don't know how your friend feels about flowers, but I've always been partial to orchids. Orchids? So be it. I'll take a dozen orchids. A dozen orchids? You must be very taken with this friend, whoever she is. But a single orchid is generally considered most tasteful. Only one? Can that say enough? With a simple eloquence. One orchid it shall be. Your very best. Will this do? Oh, perfectly. But don't you want me to box it? Oh, that would be superfluous. Vina, I believe you said the accepted phrase is, be my valentine. Homer, for me, I don't know what to say. Say only that you'll accept this token and the heartfelt sentiment with which it's given. Why, all right, I will. But there's something else that goes with the valentine gift. What? A kiss. Vina, <laughs> I haven't felt a kiss like yours in centuries. Neither have I. Oh, oh Vina, you are most rare among mortal women. And you among mortal men. Why, this Valentine's Day is extraordinary. What happens now? I... Well, I'm not sure. I think it depends upon the circumstances. And under these circumstances? Well, I need a little time to, uh... Perhaps a walk in the night air. Oh, wonderful. Let, let's begin. 
Homer, I believe the gentleman expects to be paid. Oh, oh yes, of, of course. Uh, excuse me a moment. Uh, Zeus? In your right front pocket. Thank you. Oh, swell. Drachmas. <coughs> Uh, my good merchant, uh, I've only recently arrived here from out of town and, and haven't had time to acquire the standard currency. Uh, will these be acceptable? Is that gold? Uh, yes, certainly. Gold drachmas. Well, uh, let me check my exchange rates here. Uh, yes, a gold drachma will just about cover it. Just one? Uh, no, no, you're right. I believe it's it's two. It's oh, two. Well, here, uh, take three uh, for your trouble. Oh, if you insist. Oh, oh, I nearly forgot. It's another drachma for the pin. Oh, very well. Here. Thank you, Zeus. The coins were acceptable. You're welcome. Go on about your business now. I have a feeling that something is about to go very wrong with the heating system in that shop. Really? Hmm. Oh, all right. Vina. Are you ready? Goodness, Zeus, or uh, someone must be very angry up there tonight. Look, is that snow falling inside the floor shop? Yes, it seems to be. My place is this way. Your place? Oh, fine. You know, Homer, I meant what I said back at the florist. I've never known a man quite like you. Where are you from? Oh, it's a place very different from your city here. In the country? Decidedly more rural than this. No, I mean in this country, in America? Oh, no, uh, not in this country. Uh, we really don't think of ourselves as a nation up there. Up there? Oh, you mean Canada. That's a very rural place. That description would fit my home nicely. So what brings a man from the Canadian countryside to New York City? Uh, research. Oh, what kind? I suppose you could say I'm examining comparative cultures. I've heard of that. Isn't that what they call anthro an anthropology? Anthropology. The study of man. Yes. I think that would be a good name for what I'm doing here. A Canadian anthropologist doing research in New York. Boy, you sure don't make it very easy to learn much about you. I really don't like to talk very much about myself. I'd rather talk about you. I, too, meant what I said back there. I didn't think it was possible for me to feel a kiss like yours again. Again? Why do I get the feeling I'm being compared to another person? Oh, Vina, believe me when I say no other person could compare with you. There you go again, begging the question. Talking to you is like catching flies. You think you got something, but you look in your hand, and it's gone. I'm sorry. I'll try to be as direct as I can. You're right. You do remind me of someone else. I thought so. I have pretty good instincts about these things. But she is only a memory of times and places that have always seemed so much better, so much more real. But being here with you makes the past fade into shadow. But what about you? Don't I also seem to detect in your eyes some shade of a figure from your past? Well, I confess. I've known other men. And as with you, there was once a person who shone like the sun in my youth. When we loved, there was music and the stars danced to the melody. But he too belongs to the past. I have failed to love until you taught me how again. To hear you speak of love is to learn again what the word really means. I understand again, and so I exist again. Oh, we're home. Is this where you live, Vina? The candy business must be profitable. You could say that I'm a woman of unusual resources. Well, here's my door. Must this evening end? May I not come in? I'm afraid we'll disturb Millie. Besides, I have many things to think about. Many things to think about. I more than any should understand what that means, but when I'm with you, I know only the deepest, most sublime feelings. Feelings long hidden, and I thought long forgotten. And when I am with you, I find I have only the clearest, most sublime of thoughts. I'm lost in a universe of images and forms that seem to reach to the very dawn of creation. Oh. Fina, I swear to you, this is the last time we part. I will see to it that our love lasts forever. Yes, forever. Good night, love.
Good night, most precious of men. How was it, mistress? Still awake? Yes. Oh, so tell me about it. Was he smitten, madly taken, head over heels? Yes, I believe he was. Oh, and you made him leave you at the door. Oh, that's good. That's clever. He'll be groveling first thing in the morning. Oh, to have such power over men, over any man you choose. Oh, that must be wonderful. Mistress, what's the trouble? Is there anything wrong with him? Wasn't he what you expected? No, there's nothing wrong with him. And he certainly wasn't what I expected. I don't understand. I don't understand either. But I know, I know I want to be with him forever. I must see Zeus. Zeus! Hey, don't go without me! Hey! Zeus, I must speak with you. We'll return for the conclusion of the Feast of Valentine after this. And now, the conclusion of the Feast of Valentine. So, it seems that Apollo, sent to Earth by Zeus to do a little research on Valentine's Day, has been surprised to find himself fallen madly in love with Vina, who runs a candy store. By the same token, Vina has fallen in love with Apollo, although she thinks his name is Homer. And to top it all off, when we left her and Millie, they were sounding suspiciously like a couple of Olympian characters we met a little earlier in the story. And Vina was calling on Zeus of all people. Got it all straight? Well, maybe things will work out as we rejoin our characters in Olympus. Zeus, I must speak with you. Wait a minute, Aphrodite. I was here first. It's all right, Apollo. I won't forget you. So, Aphrodite, where have you been off to? I've been down among the mortals and... And without my permission? Forgive me, Lord, but I had to find out about this new Valentine's Day. And, and did you find it to your liking? Yes, it was mm. very nice. Mm -hmm. Lord Zeus, please. I've met a man. I should say the chances of that were quite good among the mortals. This is a very special man. I thought they were all special to you, sort of uh, your forte. Lord Zeus, listen. Well, all right, all right, I, I will listen. This is a very special man, like none I've ever known. I want him with me. I want him here in Olympus. Here? Well, 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 can't you just play with him down there for a while? I don't want to play with him. I can't. I want his companionship and his love forever. Strange, but Apollo here has just asked for the same thing. Yes, and first. Will you grant my request, Lord? And mine? Uh, let, 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 let me tell you a little story. Now... Uh, no, the point of the story is this. You two have met and loved these two fine creatures in the aspect of a fellow mortal. If you were to bring them here and reveal yourself as you truly are, they might well suffer the same fate as poor Semele. Um, I, I will grant your request if you wish it, but consider well. The thought of loving him for only the short span of a mortal life and then spend eternity without him in loneliness and longing is an agony. But to bring her here to her death and face an eternity of guilt and pain is unthinkable. You don't give easy problems, Lord Zeus. So you see, Echo, it really didn't matter at all. I was mistaken in his love and ended up feeling pretty silly. Oh, I'm sorry, mistress. Hello, Aphrodite. Apollo, what brings you to the fountain? I suppose you've heard about my little affair down below and now have come to gloat. No, not at all. It seems I too labored under a false impression and wound up playing the fool. Well, it seems the mortals have made quite a lot of progress over the years and can teach us gods a few tricks of their own. Aphrodite, I tell you what. Let's forget about mankind. We'll make a separate peace, you and me. We'll live here in Olympus and forget about everything else. And maybe we can find again that contentment we lost so long ago. All right, Apollo. Maybe we can. But if I'm to forget about the mortals, I'd better start with this. What's that? A silly little remembrance of my folly. Into the fountain with you, Homer. You were all wet anyway. Wait. What did you just say? Goodbye to Homer. Homer? And that voice. Vina? How did you know? Homer! You! 
in that candy store. And you, with that funny mustache. <laughs> it tickled. <laughs> I know. Apollo. Oh, love. Zeus. Zeus. Uh, what is it, Echo? Apollo and Aphrodite, they're... Yes, I know. It all worked out pretty well, don't you think? Hmm? Do you mean you planned all this? Of course. How else could it have gone so well? And don't look so surprised. I'm not the bombastic old fool you thought me to be, at least not always. Yes, I think this clears up our little problem of relevance quite well. How can Apollo and Aphrodite falling in love help us reach the mortals? Oh, Echo. When the gods love, the universe sings, and the hearts of mankind can't help but beat to the rhythm. We do not reach the mortals. It is they who reach the gods. It's marvelous. But it makes me sad. Sad? That I have no one. But there's a place for you as well. It is you who give hope to the hearts that beat alone. You're such a lovely thing. But Narcissus was a fool. If Hera were not so jealous a wife, I think I would woo you myself. Oh. <laughs> Come with me. Will you make it snow again? No more snow. I think the earth deserves an early spring. I want to show you the new gardens. Our little home has expanded a great deal since you and Aphrodite went away. Come, I'll show you. Take my hand. Did I ever tell you the story of King Lycaon and my affair with his daughter Callisto? No. Well. What really happened? Of course, you know, Aphrodite found Apollo. Apollo found Aphrodite. Zeus found Echo, but not the way you're thinking. And the florist found himself up to his pedals in snow. I can't ride my bicycle like this. <laughs> <clears throat> the Feast of Valentine, starring Victor Jory, was produced by Helen Baldwin, David Getz, Rita Hotois, and Gail Johnson. The script was written by W. Randolph Galvin and David Getz from a story by W. Randolph Galvin. The Feast of Valentine starred Victor Jory as Zeus, featured Helen Baldwin as Aphrodite, David Getz as Apollo, Rita Hotois as Echo, and especially Gary Burbank as everybody else. Recorded semi-live at Track Studios. Happy Valentine, everyone. <laughs>